90% of people are deficient in vitamin D. There's never been a more important time than now to make sure you are not deficient in vitamin D. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Let's pop some pills. Nailed it. <clears throat> Sometimes called the sunshine vitamin, vitamin D is my favorite vitamin and one of the most important for nearly everybody. It's an essential nutrient that has powerful effects on your body, like calcium absorption, maintaining strong bones and a strong immune system. There's never been a more important time than now to make sure you are not deficient in vitamin D, especially with infections plaguing the world currently. We gotta get this message out there. Let's jump into the seven signs that you might be deficient in vitamin D. Number one, weakness and fatigue. Are you feeling tired and groggy, low energy all the time? Well, that can be one of the first signs of vitamin D deficiency, but it's often overlooked because it often overlaps with other vitamin and mineral deficiencies or other conditions. As a doctor, usually anemia, iron deficiency, hypothyroidism are higher on our list because that's what we're taught in school. When someone presents with fatigue or tiredness in medical school, we were never really taught to test for vitamin D, but we were always taught to test for hemoglobin, test for iron, test for thyroid issues. So if you have unexplained tiredness, you could be deficient in vitamin D. Number two, type two diabetes. Many studies have found an association between low vitamin D levels and insulin resistance and, and therefore risk of developing type two diabetes. Studies have shown that vitamin D can help improve insulin sensitivity and also has an effect on pancreatic beta cells, which are the cells that produce insulin, which helps to regulate your blood sugar. Supplementation with vitamin D can help slow the development of type 2 diabetes and even lower blood sugar levels in people who have diabetes. I mean, I think you're starting to see why I love this vitamin. Number three, achy muscles and bone pain, especially lower back pain. If you experience a lower back pain that's not going away and doesn't have another cause, low levels of vitamin D might be contributing to that. Now, muscle pain and bone pain present differently. Now, let's talk muscles. So vitamin D has been shown to be important in muscle strength and muscle contraction. And for bones, children who are deficient in vitamin D can develop rickets, which is soft bones. Adults can also get osteomalacia, which is like adult rickets where they develop softer bones. And since vitamin D is so important for your bones and absorption of calcium by your body, low levels of it can also lead to osteoporosis, which can have a lot of effects on your life, like increased fractures. This, this is especially important for women and elderly people who are more at risk of osteoporosis and fractures. If you're trying to differentiate between muscle pain and bone pain, they present differently. Muscle pain tends to be more kind of dispersed or generalized throughout the body. It tends to be aggravated or worsened by physical exertion or activity and usually tends to go away within like a day or two. Whereas bone pain tends to be more intense, tends to be deeper and tends to be like more localized towards a specific area and tends to last longer. Bone pain is also not really linked with physical activity. You tend to have it whether you're moving or not. Number four, increased infections or reoccurring infections. Now this is a really relevant one in today's society. As we've talked about, vitamin D is hugely important in the immune system, in your body's response to infections that come into the body. If you're that person that's always sick compared to your family and friends, and you constantly have reoccurring infections, it's possible that you could be deficient in vitamin D. And what's pretty cool is actually back in the 1700s and 1800s, cod liver oil, which is high in vitamin D, was actually used to treat the infection TB or tuberculosis, the lung infection. There's been a lot more research being done on vitamin D because it has actually been linked to susceptibility in the current virus plaguing the world. I'm not gonna mention it by name because sometimes the videos get flagged, but you know what I mean. People with low vitamin D levels are more likely to get the virus and also are more likely to have more severe symptoms. You are currently positive. Supplementing with higher levels of vitamin D can be extremely beneficial for your immune system. And a lot more research is happening about that. And you know what? A lot of people don't really know about it. And I'm really hoping that we can get that message out there. So make sure to share this video with your family and friends and tell them about vitamin D. All right, number five, autoimmune diseases. So you guys already are up to date about the fact that vitamin D is important in the immune system. 
and autoimmune diseases are a result of our immune system just going crazy and attacking itself. People who supplemented with vitamin D at 2000 IU had a decreased rate of autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, autoimmune thyroid disorders. One study found the rates were decreased by 22%. Now I'm a big fan of that. For those who don't know, I have an MD, but I also have a PhD in neuroscience, and my focus was immunology, like neuroimmunology, and I focused on an autoimmune disorder, multiple sclerosis. That is when I first became so intrigued with vitamin D, because there were so many studies linking low vitamin D levels to development of multiple sclerosis. And what is super interesting is if you look at the world, the rates of multiple sclerosis are higher in people in the Northern hemisphere. So farther from the equator when there, where there is less sunlight and the rates of MS are lower in people who live closer to the equator where they get more sunlight, likely because they have more vitamin D. I remember being so fascinated by that pattern. Yet another reason to stock up on vitamin D. Number six, low mood and depression. The role of vitamin D in mood disorders is becoming more and more apparent. There are vitamin D receptors in parts of the brain that affect mood, and it is thought to increase production of feel-good neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Several studies have shown that a deficiency in vitamin D can contribute to development of depression, and that supplementation in people who are deficient in vitamin D can help improve symptoms of depression. And this could explain why a lot more people develop seasonal depression in the winter where we have a lower vitamin D levels because there's less sunlight. And last but not least, number seven, blood pressure. Vitamin D is known to help regulate blood pressure and low levels of vitamin D can contribute to increase in blood pressure or hypertension. In a study, they found that supplementing with vitamin D helped decrease blood pressure in people who had hypertension. Why are so many people deficient in vitamin D though? Well, there's only a few foods that actually have it in high levels. A lot of fortified foods will have it, like cereals and milk, like almond milk will be fortified with it. Certain fatty fish has it and cod liver oil, but not everyone is eating these foods. And vitamin D deficiency is hard to test for. It's not on the radar for a lot of doctors. A lot of the symptoms overlap with other symptoms. Most of it is actually produced in your skin in response to UV rays from sunlight. That's why it's called the sunlight vitamin. Your body is literally so cool. I mean, I might be biased, I'm a pretty big nerd, but it literally makes vitamin D3 when exposed to UV rays from sun. But a lot of us aren't getting that much sunlight. A lot of us spend a lot of time indoors, cough, cough myself. And there's also risks of a lot of sunlight exposure like skin cancer. So all of that contributes to why there is so much vitamin D deficiency going on. If you're wondering if you're more at risk of vitamin D, well, people who live in the Northern hemisphere where it's colder, where there's less sunlight, where there's more winter weather, they tend to be more at risk of vitamin D deficiency because they get less sunlight. Also, if you're an introvert, just kidding with that one. People with darker skin also produce less vitamin D because they have more melanin in their skin to help protect them against UV rays. So they will make less vitamin D from sunlight. Okay, so what the heck are you going to do with all this knowledge? So if you want to make sure you have adequate vitamin D levels, you can try getting it from foods. Like I mentioned, some fatty fish has it, cod liver oil, fortified foods, but I do recommend supplementing with vitamin D because it is hard to get just from sunlight. Now the recommendation of how much vitamin D to take varies based on country, but one recommendation, for example, is for adults age 19 and older to take 600 IU, and if you're 70 and older, 800 IU. Now, I think that's ridiculously low. I mean, even look at this supplement, it's a thousand IUs. I honestly don't know where they got this 600 number. I don't know who came up with that, where they pulled it out of, but just in my opinion, that's pretty low. But this is not medical advice, this is just my own opinion, but I'll tell you that I take 4,000 IUs and I've been doing that for years. Vitamin D is difficult to overdose on. They've done studies where people have taken 10,000 IUs of vitamin D for months and had no issues. But some sources say that 4,000 is kind of the upper safe limit, but there are people who take more than that. One study found that you would need to be taking 60,000 units of vitamin D for months to overdose and have toxicity. One of the potential side effects of really high levels of vitamin D can be kidney stones. 
So something just to keep in mind, but that would be at very high levels of vitamin D. I do recommend taking vitamin D with food. So you can take it with your breakfast because it is fat soluble. So it requires some fat in your food to help absorb better. Also, some research has suggested that taking vitamin D with vitamin K2 is beneficial because they have kind of a synergistic relationship. They work together, they're friends. Vitamin K is found in some leafy green vegetables, as well as some fermented vegetables, and also in some fatty foods like egg yolk and cheese and liver. So the way they work together is vitamin D is important for calcium absorption by your body, but it doesn't necessarily control where the calcium gets absorbed. Vitamin K2 does that. So calcium can be absorbed from the blood into the bones, which is where we want it to be because we want strong bones, but it can also be deposited from the blood onto soft tissues such as arteries and kidneys. And that's not where we want it to go because that can contribute to atherosclerosis. Some studies suggest taking vitamin D together with vitamin K2. There's two types of vitamin K2. I personally take MK7. There's, there's MK7 and MK4. The evidence on whether you need to take vitamin D with vitamin K2 is still ongoing. It's not conclusive. It seems that it's especially important if you are deficient in vitamin K or if you're taking really high levels of vitamin D, because it's thought that at moderate levels of vitamin D, the absorption of calcium to the arteries is not an issue, but at higher levels when there's a lot of calcium in the blood, then it might become an issue that you might have some calcium deposited onto the arteries. But with vitamin K, I would recommend talking with your doctor before you start supplementing with it because it is a little bit different than vitamin D. Like for vitamin D, I would suggest everyone take it. Because for vitamin K2, it can actually interfere with some medications. So people who are on blood thinners like warfarin, and they might not be able to take vitamin K. I would suggest potentially talking to your doctor, especially if you are on blood thinners. And there are also a few other medications that it can interact with. Okay, I hope you found that video helpful on why vitamin D is so important. I really want to get this message out there because I, I'm honestly shocked at how many people do not know about vitamin D and how many people are actually deficient in it. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and subscribe, hit that notification bell and share it with your family and friends. Spread all the health knowledge. Make sure to subscribe for more health knowledge so you can become the healthiest and best version of yourself. Let's do it together.